And welcome back to the American Athletic Conference Media Day. Sign Rini and I up to yeah. go call a game at Tulane. Always a great place to play. The six and six last season, their third consecutive bowl game. And they'll do it this year with a returning quarterback in Michael Pratt. What did you see from him last year and some flashes that give you uh, kind of some confidence in him heading into his sophomore year. Yeah, well, he grew up in a hurry. He had 20 touchdowns last year as a true freshman. That was the most of any in the country. And just the experience he gained last year is invaluable. So that means so much moving into the start of this season. Well, as we move into Tulane's question and answer section, we now welcome head coach Willie Fritz to the podium or the Zoom call as we're doing this virtually. Thanks so much for joining us, Coach. I, I want to start off. You have new coordinators on both sides of the ball. How has the process been implementing those new schemes and getting them acquainted with your players? Well, it's been great. First of all, you both were uh, more than welcome to come to <laughs> New Orleans and come to a game. You're right. It's a tremendous experience. No, I, I think uh, having two new coordinators, uh, luckily we had the advantage of you know, some familiarity with both of them with our program. Chip Long, our, our new offensive coordinator, he's got a wealth of experience. He's the offensive coordinator for three years at uh, Notre Dame. He also called the offense uh, when he was at Memphis. And, and he's also best friends with Will Hall, who was our offensive coordinator the last two years. So there are some similarities between what Chip runs and, and what we're doing offensively now and, and what Coach Hall did. And then Coach Hampton, uh, Chris Hampton, left us for a year. He'd been with us for four seasons at Tulane, went a year to Duke, and is now back, very familiar with the players, and the structure, and how I like to do things. So it is new, but there also are, are a lot of uh, experiences both of them have had within the program and understand how I like to do things. Just now for Coach Willie Fritz, we'll start with Gary Smith from the New Orleans Times-Picayune, please. Not there. Gary, you're not hearing your audio. If you just want to want to try again. Okay, we'll see if we can get Gary connected. We'll go back to we'll go with Dan Tortora. Wake up call DT, please. Coach, how are you? Good, Dan. How are you? Doing well. Uh, just what you can say about, you know, kind of I mean you have Oklahoma coming up on the schedule. There's been a lot of things going on with, uh, you know, obviously Oklahoma, Texas, and, and what it means for the rest of the Big 12. How are you viewing this as a coach, as realignment maybe rearing its head again? You know, I'm not really looking into that too much. Our athletic director, Troy Dannon, is, is you know, you know understands exactly what's going on and is going to put Tulane in the best position possible. You know, and we also have uh, – we embrace the schedule that we have. Uh, you know, one of the things our conference commissioner, when I first came into the league – going on six years now. He wanted us to play a, a much more difficult schedule, and, and we're doing that. I think our guys are excited and pumped up about the opportunity to play, you know, if not the best team in the country, one of the top two or three teams uh, in preseason rankings with Oklahoma. And we get to do it at home, which is uh, doesn't always occur. So we're very, very excited about the schedule we got in front of us this season. And then as far as a quick follow-up here, uh, you know, New Orleans, we know what that can bring and, and what that type of excitement is to be there and to visit. And I've had the opportunity to be around the people there, and they're incredible. Uh, having fans in the stands and, and some sense of normalcy, just how important that is to a place like New Orleans, which has such a, its own heartbeat, so to speak. I think it's uh, very important, especially the, the stadium that we have. I, I, I tell everybody all the time that I, I think this is the, the most intimate setting for a college football game every seat is a great seat uh you know sometimes you you play in some stadiums and there's kind of a rumor of a game going on down on the field but you know this is really a uh, excellent stadium and I think when people come and watch a game here on our campus uh, they want to come back to as many as possible so uh, having a, a first game against a team like Oklahoma and uh, a packed house I think is going to help us for years to come Thank you, Coach. Thank you.
Coach, uh, what is your team's vaccination rate and what do you think of the league's position that games that are affected by COVID will not be rescheduled but may result in a forfeit? I think that's good. We're, we're very proud of the fact, I believe we were one of 10 schools that played 12 ball games last year. Our guys did a fantastic job of following all the protocol that was established by both our university and also the AAC. Uh, we're 100% vaccinated with our coaching staff and we're over 90% with our players right now. So uh, I think that's a good combination, but we still got to be very, very careful. I think all of us realize that and, uh, you know, we're just going to have to make sure that we're, you know, abiding by all the rules at, at both Tulane and New Orleans and, and the conferences uh, set for us. You can go back to Dan Tortora for, for a follow-up, please. Coach, uh, for you, the, the biggest pieces that you're kind of looking at this season as you step in to uh, 2021, kind of those key areas that you're looking at leadership to step up at this point for 2021. You know, we're going to play a lot of guys early. This is by far the most depth that I've ever had here at Tulane before. and feel good about us uh, too deep wise. Uh, so th that's going to, you know, we're going to have to be smart as coaches to figure out, you know, playing time and who to roll in and who to roll out. And then also we're going to have a lot of competition for starting positions during preseason camp. You know, you can go through spring ball, but it's it's not playing a ball game. We're going to actually do three live scrimmages, which is one more than I normally do, and then use those first couple games as well, you know, to, to figure out, you know, who's going to be playing the majority of snaps for you, who's going to come in and roll in every second th series, every third series. So uh, that's something we're going to have to do a great job. I'm going to have to do a great job of as a head coach and and then our three coordinators on the offense, defense, and special teams need to do a great job of that as well. Hey, Coach, Chris Button here in studio. For Michael Pratt last year, he got kind of thrust into that starting role a couple games in. Where have you seen his growth now, knowing that the job is his, having a spring under his belt as the keys to that offense? You know, Michael is a, a fantastic leader on and off the field and, and very involved with everybody on uh, in our program, not just the offensive side of the ball. Uh, you're right, he did kind of get thrown in there week three, and and then from that point forward, we, we didn't look back. And and uh, just uh, there's so many things he does for us on the field, but he's uh, more effective off the field and, and uh, you know, helping – the coaching staff, you know, uh, build that team atmosphere and team camaraderie that's so important. Hey, Willie, Billy Embody with 24 seven sports uh, opening up with Oklahoma coming to Tulane, uh, can you speak to the atmosphere that you guys are expecting around the stadium and uh, just the excitement level of, of that type of uh, an opponent coming to uh, Tulane? You bet. Uh, you know, it's, it's really exciting that we got a team of their caliber coming here to New Orleans and playing in Yulman Stadium, you know, our stadium that's right on campus, right in the middle of campus. Uh, you know, and we've had a lot of talk about it. Our guys are very excited. You always have everybody's attention uh, week one of the season, irregardless of who you're playing. But I think there's a little more bounce in their step knowing that we got one of the top teams in the country coming to our stadium. Hey, Coach, Rini Angolia here. Uh, you talked about Chris Hampton coming back, and he's very familiar, obviously, with your personnel. And I think, arguably, you have the best linebacker group in the conference, uh, Dorian Williams and Nick Anderson. Talk about that group. Yeah, we've got four excellent linebackers coming back. I always, you know, talk about having bona fide Division One football players and certainly the four guys who we got they're gonna, they're, they're, that will take the majority of the reps for us uh, at the linebacker position uh, fit the bill in that regard. Uh, 
you know, Nick Anderson came in here as a junior college transfer from Jones Community College. He's, you know, I think he led our team in tackles last year. Dorian Williams is on the veterinarian uh, watch list for linebackers. He's a guy that when we recruited him, he's 191 pounds. He's now 230. I think he's got a, a future playing at the next level after Tulane. Marvin Moody has started a ton of games for us at linebacker. He's going to be a super senior for us this upcoming senior season. And then another super senior we have is, is Kevin Henry. Kevin had a great year, and he's made tremendous progress uh, in the spring and in the summer uh, with workouts and, and really taking everything 100% serious, whether it's nutrition or lifting weights or coming in and studying extra. So it's rare that you have two guys, you know, the, the linebacker position. We feel really good about all four of our guys. And we'll be able to roll those guys and then also play them a bunch in the kicking game as well. Well, thank you so much, Coach Fritz, for joining us. We're looking forward to seeing your guys hit the field as you host Oklahoma on September 4th. Thank you very much. Roll wave. <laughs> That'll be a good one. If you're going to go to New Orleans, yeah. that one against the Sooners as they open up this season. You asked him about the defense. What did you learn from him of, of what we can expect from them? A lot of depth. They returned 16 stars, and I just think they have depth everywhere. And that's really good. And then, of course, two new coordinators. But he talked about it. Chris Hampton was there before, so he's very familiar. And Chip Long runs a very similar system to Will Hall. So I, I think they're going to be running from the get-go. Even on the offensive side, when you look at who they get back as well, Taiji Spears returning from ACL injury. Cam Carroll, who was their leading rusher, also returns. They've been to three consecutive bowl games. That is a school record as Willie Fritz gets the Tulane program uh, back uh, into the spotlight, and they were picked seventh in the preseason poll. Where do you see them fitting in, kind of in the Houstons, the Memphis, yeah. kind of in that middle area? You know, for the last couple of years, they're, they're that team that's just kind of been on the cusp, right? They're just almost there. Mm -hmm. So this could be the year with the experience they have coming back. This is the year they could turn the page and really be up there in, in the top of the conference of the upper echelon. Let's now join the student athletes who are joining us from Tulane. Michael Pratt, quarterback, joining us, and Nick Anderson, linebacker out of Tulane. Thanks so much for joining us, guys. We'll have the media start asking some questions of you guys. Awesome. And again, raise question, raise or use the raise hand feature in your chat. If you have a question, we'll go right to questions. We'll start with uh, Trace Trilco from Sons of UCF, please. Uh, guys, uh, you're projected sixth in the league. It's seven wins, six wins. What do you have to do differently this season to really contend in the American? Uh, really, I think we just have to finish. Um, when it comes down to those big time games, uh, we were in three of them last year where with Navy, SMU, and Tulsa. Um, once we get to that point, uh, fourth quarter comes, we just really got to finish and execute. Um, like Pratt said, it's all about, you know, just playing our style of football. On um, playing to our standard, playing to our level. We have talented coaches, um, talented athletes on our team. And when we all come together, we can do dynamic things. So like um, Michael just said, just playing our style of football, uh, finishing and putting the emphasis on being the best we can be week in, week out. This is Brian Moss with Tiger Sports Report. This is a question for both of you. Uh, there's a lot of competitive games in the American Conference. What makes this conference so fun to play in for both of you? Um, overall, just like you said, just the competitive spirit in this conference. I feel like this conference can go in and compete with anybody, any team in the nation. I um, mean, to just play that level of talent week in, week out, it makes you a better football player. It's something that you thrive to see. Um, just play against players that, you know, are just as talented as you. It makes you... You know, want to be better, it makes you want to drive, complete that drive and that passion of being the best you can be week in, week out. Yeah, just like you said, just the, the level of competition in this league. Um, you know, I really feel like any team in this league is capable of going and playing any ACT or a SEC, ACC um, school and, you know, having a good chance and, you know, coming out and wins in a lot of those games. Um, so just that com competitive spirit and uh, going in each week and, you know, getting to play some top teams um, is really exciting. We'll take the next one from Dan Tortora. Wake up call DT, please. 
Uh, Michael, for you, just what you can say coming off your true freshman season at quarterback, you learned the most from the film. And then, uh, Nick, just what you can say about defensive coordinator Chris Hampton. Um, you know, looking back at year one, um, you know, I really emphasized, you know, going back and not looking at what I did well, but what I did wrong um, and getting to take those things into the off season, into the spring, into the summer um, and really just, you know, paying a lot of attention to detail um, and emphasizing the little things, my footwork, uh, moving my eyes through progressions, picking up blitzes, changing protections. Um, so all that stuff really just, you know, shows on film stepping up in the pocket, avoiding sacks. Um, so, you, you know, those little things that I got to work on this off season, hopefully will translate into uh, the season coming up and, you know, get to see the work that we put in. Um, having Coach Hampton come to our program was phenomenal to see a familiar face that, you know, has a loving spirit, a competitive spirit, and that drive for being great um, was just great to have back in our locker room. Um, he's a phenomenal uh, coach as far as like scheme wise and on and off the field as being that, you know, father figure to our players on our team. And I'm just excited to see what he has in store for us this season. And then for both of you, quick follow up, just what you think about name, image and likeness, uh, how you've kind of taken that all in and what information you know? Uh, I think it's a good opportunity for athletes. Um, I think it gives a lot of people opportunities um, and, you know, it's more of a drive, a sense of urgency and, you know, level of um, competitiveness to, you know, win those starting spots. A lot of guys, you know, they have some that they can look forward to. Um, you know, so just like I said, it's just a really good opportunity for a lot of guys, but you got to make sure you stay on, on task and, you know, not let yourself slip away and focus on the wrong things, but, you know, take the opportunities as they come. It's just a blessing to be able to benefit off your name, image, and likeness and, you know, uh, gain that compensation for the things that you go through as a college football player. Um, it's a blessing. And uh, like Pratt said, it's something that can't be a distraction at the end of the day. Your opportunities with name, image, and likeness comes for your proficiency on the football field. Mm -hmm. So you got to keep the main thing the main thing and keep performing uh, and doing your duties day in and day out athletically and everything else will take care of itself. Thank you. Okay, we're going to try again with Gary Smith from the New Orleans Times-Picayune, please. As a follow-up to that question right there, guys, just any any individual opportunities that you've already capitalized on with the name, image, and likeness rights, and you mentioned how, how much is the balance for you making sure you're still focused on on the field? Um, overall, uh, I haven't really talked to many companies as far as my name, image, image and likeness. I talked to a couple of local places from home. Um, but my main focus this summer has been on, you know, just being the best I can for my team, um, preparing for this season, uh, preparing for our season opener on September 4th. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like you said, um, you know, I've talked to some smaller companies and different things like that. Um, but, you know, when it comes to the balance, especially this season uh, coming up um, over the summer is obviously when NIL dropped and was allowed. Um, but, you know, this summer, We've really not taken that in, kind of just emphasized what we needed to get done on the field. And uh, I feel like when we're balancing that out and uh, paying attention to what's necessary on the field and what we have to put into work this season, uh, all that stuff will come, you know, once it pays off on the field. And you guys were picked seventh in the media poll released this morning. Any, any, any thoughts on that? Um, as far as the program, we, we plan on letting the work that we put in speak for itself. Yep. Um, nothing much to really say on that. Uh, we got to lace up our cleats and we got to play football just like everybody else. Um, I'm excited for this season. I'm excited to see what we do this season. I'm excited for everything to come together and for us to really prove that we're one of the top premier teams in this league. Um, that's really all I got to stay on that. Okay, we get one more from Justin Williams from The Athletic, please. Uh, Michael, as a, a young player, curious your thoughts on the potential for an expanded uh, college football playoff and what that might mean for a program like Tulane uh, in, in future seasons. Uh, you know, I think it's really cool. Uh, I think it'd be a, a good opportunity um, just having more teams enter that college football playoff. Um, you know, definitely gives teams like Tulane and a lot of teams in our conference a good opportunity to get into that playoff. Um, so, you know, it's definitely something that's exciting and motivating. Uh, and we just got to, you know, keep progressing forward and, you know, be able to make that step to get there. 
Michael, Chris Button here. You, there's video of you working out with Jalen Waddle over the summer. What did you learn from him, and how did that relationship develop? Um, just a lot of mutual guys that I know. Um, he was working down in South Florida, and I was down there training with my trainer, Goldfeed Global. Um, just you know, being able to be there with some of those top guys, and you know, hearing some of the experiences that they've been through through college. Um, you know, just you know, taking that knowledge in, and then. You know, really just going out there and seeing their work ethic and, you know, the sacrifices that they make um, to be in the position that they are um, is just really, really intriguing and inspiring and uh, definitely more of a, a mental thing to take out from that than a physical aspect. Hey, guys, Rini and Goli here. So you guys talked about how tough your conference is and what a grind it is each and every week. But you get to open up against one of the top ranked teams in the country in Oklahoma. You get it, get them at home. Talk about, you know, the opportunity there to take on a program like Oklahoma. Um, overall, it's just exciting to have one of the top teams in the nation. Um, I think yesterday was ranked uh, number two in the first ESPN poll. And just having, you know, that opportunity to really display how good you are, how good we are as a program on our own turf is phenomenal. That's something that we've put emphasis on this entire all season is being great and starting off with that first game of really showing the nation who we are as a football program and showing them that we really can compete on top level with top level teams and it's exciting. Yeah, like you said, it's just a really great opportunity for us um, to get to showcase what, we, what we've done this off season, progress moving forward. Um, but we're not gonna take this game um, to that standard, but we're gonna see it just like any other game. Um, and you know, handle business like we're supposed to. Uh, and you know, obviously, there's there's a little bit of a mental edge of you know knowing that they're coming in here and uh, with the opportunity we have going in. But we're just excited to get to play football every week, and uh, we're really looking forward to it. Thank you so much, Nick Anderson, Michael Pratt. We're looking forward to that game against Oklahoma on September 4th. Thank you so much, guys. Thank, Thank you. you. Roll wave.